What's up, time brother? To chop it up with us, you know. It's long overdue for me. You've yeah. always been behind the camera, you know. It's about time we put you in front of it so we can get in depth with it. It's so uh, so different being on this side now yeah. at the camera, especially <laughs> with you and chop it up. And it's funny because every episode we shot, we all always end up having behind the scene interviews, anyways, exactly. of us talking <laughs> about life and things in general so i'm glad to be here um, to do this episode in this exhibit right now which has a special meaning obviously for me and uh, yeah i think it was a genius idea and uh, right, i'm glad for you to show up today and let's and for you to see this uh first and too uh i i remember talking to you about this project mm -hmm. or when we were filming those episodes in the last yeah, year or so where we are now very blessed yeah. before we get to the soundtrack though let's get to know quest you know where did quest come from wow uh the old idea of uh being involved in music started when i was a kid and my first introduction to music was in the 80s listening to movie soundtracks okay okay that's where the love started yeah not a lot of people know that but that's was my first introduction to music okay. actually i was watch i was always watching movies to listen to the soundtrack so you had a love for sound from, yes from, from, from the even as a kid i was always trying to like analyze the way they went at it to create those sounds okay. uh okay there's a string coming in there and whatever and stuff like that so my first introduction would was always movie soundtracks and that's why 30 plus years later I decided to name this project Soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Simple awesome. as that, simple as that. It's like a nod, a, a little uh, clean day to my first love of music. So yeah, basically uh, the idea of soundtrack came from when I was first introduced to music, uh, listening to movie soundtracks. Fell in love with that, obviously then Michael Jackson. Album was a big influence, Quincy Jones and all. And then in high school, um, that's when I first started adopting the name Quest. Yeah, that's when I first started because I was, uh, you have to like put yourself back in that era. There was no internet when I was in high school. So yeah, exactly. I went to high school during the early 90s. <laughs> Unless someone told you about it. Yeah. You wouldn't so, know. I was the source of music, uh, okay. the source of information in my high school, and I was collecting CDs. And over the weekend, I was always like putting mixtapes together, okay. doing copies of those mixtapes, and selling them at high school. At okay. high school, selling mixtapes. Yeah. So you had your own little DJ yeah. business going so on. So that's what my that that was my hustle, okay. and my first real introduction to being part of the music scene, and. Uh, Someone eventually told me you need to adopt a stage name or an artist name because you can't be just DJ Dave. Yeah. <laughs> which what yeah. I was at the beginning. Okay. So um, Kept it real. <laughs> I didn't think too much about it. So that I spent the weekend over and thinking about what would be my name. And I remember my first love for hip hop was listening to CKCU. CKCU. The Carlton U. <laughs> station and then over the weekend they would play hip-hop and i heard a child called quest on that station for the first time and um, i decided to go by the name moniker quest because i wanted to tribute them at the same time so it was dj quest yeah that's where it started yeah that's crazy and uh <laughs> i uh, i hustled mixed day throughout high school and then uh after high school uh, i got introduced to beat making yeah. I started doing beats. When did you first step into a studio? 1998. 
that's when you first decided I'm gonna make my own beat. Yeah, and create music. Okay. Uh, Most people see your photos, they see your videos, they don't even know that. Like. No, my first. You know? My first real uh, medium uh, was actually making beats. Before I was a producer, before I was a sound engineer or anything else, I was a beat maker. Okay. Uh, my first beats were on MPC. Uh, before computer <laughs> software and <laughs> also yeah, yeah. and then uh, my first introduction to being in a recording studio and seeing a recording session was uh, around late 90, 90s 1998 I was 18 at that time and um, shout out to Patrick McCormack mm. who was a rapper Still he was part of Boogaloo Tribe yeah. and that's my that was my first witnessing Rappers from Ottawa from doing Ottawa. it, doing shout music. Out Boogaloo Tribe. Yeah, shout yeah. out to those OGs. Oh, geez. Boogaloo Tribe, man. Uh, and if it wasn't for them, uh, probably Quest the Producer wouldn't exist right now. So then I started doing beats, then started doing my own home studio, and then they had been doing recording and producing albums since. And that kept you in. When did you ever um, start taking other artists in? I would say. Uh, you remember who, who you sold your first beat to? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do, and uh, he's on the, uh, the wall right now. Okay. His okay. name is the track. Yeah. track is who bought your first beat. Yeah. Shout out the track. You know, and I still this. remember that beat. Yeah. yeah he knows. Yeah, he knows. Of, obviously, yeah. the he made a song off of it uh, on his first album. Okay. Okay. And the track is part of this project yeah. now. Yeah. It's still, still so it's. Day. It's fun to see the full circle moment in, in, in this occasion. It's actually uh, song number 15 here on the project. Song number 15. And track. Yeah, the track. Uh, the, the song was called Déjà Vu. Okay. And uh, I think he still has copies of that album somewhere, yes. But if you go in my studio, you'll see a copy of that album on my wall. Okay. Yeah. Talking about the track and uh, a few other artists you got here on the wall, which pretty much kind of bringing the Ottawa Gatineau music scene. How do you feel about that? How would you describe the Ottawa Gatineau music scene? From someone who's witnessed it for uh, like since late 90s, pretty mm. much. You saw a transition. I saw a transition. Eras. I saw different mm. eras. I saw the like the Nine, nine, nine Planet era, yeah, yeah. the wow. Alan Tangito and yeah. all. Uh, I saw the Mike Check era here on the Gatineau yeah, side. Shout out Mike Check. Shout out Mike Check. <laughs> I saw, I saw an evolution, obviously, and also I, I can tell right now that, especially for the last four years, I've never seen that much talent in this city, like on both sides of the river, actually French and English. Yeah. And, and what's cool and what I feel blessed about me is I get to work on with the both sides too. Uh, of the river from the Gatineau and the Ottawa side, which I think it's pretty cool seeing both perspective. Uh, and you see it on this project too. Yeah. Hence why I wanted to do that project, to bridge the gap and bridge bring gap. both people together. Yeah. And you, when you'll see the, the artwork for the cover of the album, it's actually the Alexandra Bridge. Because okay. <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> showcase to both the sides. The there crossing, you go. Right? But to go back to your question, I think the scene is doing pretty good right now. It's actually very well. Uh, it's actually super powerful. The talent is amazing. Having City Fidelia coming back and supporting Ottawa music like he does, he's an ambassador. Yes. Shout out to City and um, yeah, awesome. seeing wow. people like Cranium Festival doing their thing, which is an amazing festival, an amazing never platform. Existed no, like never existed before. The there was no yes. Of festival no, there was none. There, there was, was House of Paint. Yeah, House uh, of Paint. Was one of the yeah. first I mean, ones. There was a couple, but yeah. they were so obscure that yeah. it takes. You would have to find them if you weren't yeah. in the scene. You would never know they exist. Yeah, and you'll never, you never used to see like uh, magazines talking about music Local here, artists, like music. Cap City Hip Hop, Shifter yeah. Magazine. Yeah. Uh, and all these Which platforms. Which were all from the local artists. Yes, right? you know, yes. From the demand, right? Exactly. If you weren't here, they wouldn't be here either. Exactly. Which I think is good. And also, what I love about this region is we don't... Every artist here has their own unique sound. Don't try to sound like something else. Yeah. Which I find is very nice. Yeah, yeah. And, and it keeps it very genuine and authentic. And, and also, at the same time, untapped market. So, and 
Also, what's cool is I've seen the evolution in the culture as well, as well of the city. Yeah. Ottawa was always known to be that yeah. government exactly. conservative city. The last place you find a music scene, right? Or find anything cultural anything. Anything. by that means. Exactly. Uh, but now in the last four years, you're seeing pop-up shops and exactly. you're seeing local brands yeah. develop themselves. You're seeing uh, people do stuff for the culture and the community. Uh, House of Ensemble, Presidential, uh, I can go on and on and name some people. But, uh, and also you never used to see uh, platforms that would help artists develop themselves before. There was none. Yeah, there was none. There was none. People were in their basements. Yeah. Or they were at the, their neighborhood studios. Yeah. I remember yeah. YBM on Montreal yes. Road, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Those, that's history. Yeah. But platforms like uh, like House of Ensemble mm. uh, doing their thing, trying to develop artists. Uh, obviously, that's what I'm trying to do with Dreamland as well. Yeah. And uh, big, big shout out to Kingsley and uh, Black Market Framework. Okay. What she's doing over there is this soundtrack exhibit wouldn't exist without her basically she uh she came together uh and believed in the project when i pitched the idea to her and that was like in late 2021 and um, what she's doing with black market framework is helping develop artists and also help artists with their projects and find funding for it okay. so soundtrack wouldn't exist yeah. If it wasn't for her finding me the funding too okay, as well. So, yeah. Okay. So shout out to her with her platform and all these other platforms that wouldn't exist before. Yeah, too. Opening, open doors, right? yeah, opening, yeah, opening doors. Yeah, opening doors. And also opening uh, ways. Minds, fi- minds as well. Yeah, you know. and find ways for you to promote yourself. Yeah. And so I yeah, well, I can name like a, a bunch of people now doing big things too. Like Old Mike is doing amazing things uh, with their platform over there. You're doing your thing. I'm seeing a bunch of podcasts happening, like Down to the Wire kids yeah. that you never used to see before. Never used to see it, you know? No, I like to see it. You know, a lot of people and, I've interviewed, uh, I've seen it pop out on other interviews as well. Yes, and that's what I always wanted to see. You know, like yep. we have so much talent here. All we need is each other. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, what about the city? You think the city, the city itself, is as involved as it should be? It could be more. Yeah. It could be more involved. Yeah. Uh, I say, like you said, you named a lot of people, a lot of different organizations. Yeah. Some of some of them are linked to the city, but yeah. a lot of them are not. A good eighty percent of them are not linked to anything, right? Yeah. You know, they just birth from themselves. Yeah. So that's why it brings me like on, the, yeah. on both sides of the bridge, Ottawa and Gap. Yes. Well, you that's that they get involved in pushing the hip hop scene. That shows the resiliency here from yes. the people, right? Uh, birthing yeah. their project or their platform or their companies from no, nothing, man, right? So, uh, you gotta work with what you got. I you gotta work with what you got. Also, Ottawa is known to be hard to like attract interest, interest yeah. <laughs> yeah. from the local people yeah. here. Anything, really. Yeah, I'm yeah, music. <laughs> yeah. You even see it when you go to the Senators games. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm uh, I'm very optimistic that this mentality of this culture is going to change eventually I saw a big growth in the last four years uh, pandemic didn't help obviously but uh, I'm even seeing a, a huge shift in the mentality that it wasn't there before I just Becoming respected a lot yeah, it's more becoming respected people. a lot more. People are hearing about yeah. it from Toronto and Montreal, exactly. the scene here. So before, when you told people you did music, they yeah, kind of look at you sideways. And also before, people wouldn't collaborate together too. Well, that so was a thing too. Collaboration. Uh, yeah, it's very important, man. Like yeah. another reason why I wanted to do this project and I have 36 artists on Bring it. it all together. Uh, for example, this song, uh, the NLN. Uh, S Reels and J Chinas song. I don't think they would have done a song together, together before. A lot of these artists did not know each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that was my goal, man. I'm a big fan of the scene here. I'm a big fan of the culture. I'm a big fan of everyone's talents. And I just want people to talk to each other. And I want people to notice what's all going on on both sides of the bridge. 
from both sides. Like, yeah, God no exactly. need to watch what's going on there. Exactly. I, I talked to so many people that don't even know what cranium and alcipane here is on the Ottawa side. Yes. And, and then when I talk to the Ottawa side, they don't yeah, even no know what's going on, what's going on here. Yes. So we need to bridge that gap. You know? That's, yes. I think, would help everyone. everyone. Uh, everyone. And um, that's more advanced. more advanced and more everything. Really. More everything. Yeah. It's just there's so much talent that we can all benefit from it. And I keep saying there's enough room at the table for everyone. We don't need to like add a room for more. And room for more. And as long as people just do what they do for the right reasons, I don't see only way is up. Only way is up. And uh, again, big shout out to another dude doing his thing, Mac Musa with Abby Seb and uh, yeah, over there. And uh, I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. They're, they're considered family now because we're. Uh, we're, we have the same vision and we want to, to do uh, the things to like make this the city grow. And, and that's what it's about. And you know, be the best they can be. Each other it gives the best of both worlds. Of so I can name a involved, bunch right? of people. Uh, there's mm. there's uh, Kareem, what he's doing with Woke, and there's uh, Bangs, what he's doing with his crew as well, Studio 1207, and, and Mace with Old Fe Who Festival, and yes. Uh, it's just. Good to be see. Yeah. To get into that as well. Yeah. Actually. Tell me about Good Wow. Well, that started la last summer, actually, a year ago. The people here, shout out to Limaji, where we're doing this festival right now. What is Good So they approached me last year uh, to help them co produce a festival okay. to revamp the place here. Okay. Like, I don't know if we see it on the camera, but over there is called the Pat de l'Imaginaire, which sure. they sort of manage. Sure. And my their mandate with the new direction here was to like revigorate this this place with fresh new blood and also bring attention to this gallery, this building and the park to the auto, from the Ottawa side. So they they contacted me to co-produce a festival which is called now Homegrown slash PTVC and the idea of the festival is to showcase eight performances over two weekends from local music okay. just local music Ottawa and Gatineau French and English and that's going to be the mission always uh, we just celebrated our second year this year which yeah. was a beautiful success thank you to everyone that showed up um, it's a free festival and it's always going to be to showcase local music. And what's cool about it is I saw a lot of people at this year's fest edition that that was their first time coming here. Yeah, I didn't even know. I mean, yeah. this was the first time for me coming to this building with your exposition. You know? Yeah. Without so that type of interest into it. So that was the mission from day one well done. to and it's also showcase the talents that we have here and the diversity and uh, in the music that we have here and the different backgrounds that we the different musical backgrounds that we have here which i think is amazing exactly. and so and also to create a platform for local musicians to showcase their art yeah. Come on out. that's, that's what it you got, right? and what's <laughs> cool is this year's uh, fest, uh, season of Kutsubesi, i did it parallel with my exhibit sure, exactly. which is in the building Imagine. Which they opened their doors for me to do this. Yeah, exactly. Which, is, which granted you access. Right? Yeah. What a beautiful exposition. Even their hours of business change for you. you know? Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, talking about all these different movements, right? Because uh, even though you're doing all this photography, videography, music production, Man of many hats, you know, like that. I'm keeping it really light, but those could be broken down into another 15 hats. But I know you also started Dreamland Studios. What, what's Dreamland Studios for you? Dreamland Studios is uh, basically uh, my way to uh, to uh, brand my 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 three services that I offer, which is music production, videography, and photography. So those are my three angles. That's my three services. And um, I wanted to use uh, the Dreamland banner to, to uh, promote it in the best way possible. 
and Dreamland came together um, around 2019, early 2019, when uh, <laughs> me and Heavy were working on a single called One Night in Dreamland. Okay. Okay. And uh, in my studio, <laughs> back then my studio was called uh, Daily Fit Production, D DFP. Okay. And um, uh, when he said that song, I was like, can you explain me what the meaning of the Dreamland are you using in that song? Is like, yeah, talking about Ottawa, how it was always used to be known as the place where you can dream, but to fulfill a dream, you have to go to somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. Montreal and Toronto, yeah. for example. Exactly. And I love that name. It, it resonated with me, and I started using, rebranding my studio or my my services under that banner as of then. So shout out to Heavy who came out with that. It came out out of nowhere with that name. And also what's fun is Dreamland is my initials, DL, so. Was that a coincidence or did it just- It was just a pure coincidence. That? I noticed after actually. Uh, it's meant to be. Yeah, so oh, I, I like, I like little Easter eggs like that yeah, once in a while. Yeah. There's actually Easter eggs in the pictures here too. Yeah, everywhere. And everywhere. the songs that I do and the videos that I shoot. So uh, and those were planned or did it just happen? It just happened. Okay. It just happened. Some are planned obviously because yeah. you have to plan some stuff, but most of them just are happen organically. So as of 2019, um, my brand, my company, my, my production company is called Dreamland Studios. And in collaboration with Limagie and the Black Market Framework, we put together this project. Um, we're about to get to you explaining the soundtrack project to us. I wanted to, since we're talking Dreamland Studios, I also want to talk about your Dreamland sessions. Yeah. Because I see there's been quite a few of those. I'm not sure what number we're at now. I'm sure it's in the 80s, if not. Oh, in the 90s now. now. Yeah. In the 90s now. Yeah. 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 Which is another way to showcase people's talent. Yes. Where you're pretty much recording different videos, studio sessions, or, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. I'll let you do so, it. So, as I told you earlier at the beginning of this interview, um, I like to trip, tribute or give a nod or, an, um, uh, yeah, a tribute to the past. My soundtrack is inspired by my love for soundtrack. Quest is inspired by Charcoal Quest. Dreamland Sessions is, is inspired by Rhapsody in the Basement. Rhapsody in the Basement. Yeah. I know you know that show, yeah. right? Uh, that's cool. That was a source of information yeah. back then. That was my first introduction to music videos yeah. too. And to discovering new singles. And also I remember at the end of the show, they had a freestyle yeah, exactly. on the mic. Yeah. Everybody go off. So flat, uh, fast forward to 2019, I came up, well, me and the, I, yeah, I'm gonna get emotional because uh, the idea came together when I was in the studio session with Dip Black. Mm, that's gonna uh, be another one of my questions yeah, right there. Um, but, uh, rest yeah, in peace, my brother. Peace, uh, I miss him so much. Um, mm. Let's cut into that real quick. You know, I noticed you had a corner for Dip Black right there. Um, how's your relationship with them? Do you know when you like you're a producer and you do music and you end up falling out? We we just found each other like organically, <laughs> and as soon as he dropped a verse on one of my first beat, I sent to him. I was like, wow. That's exactly the type of rapper I've always wanted to work yeah, with. Yeah, there you go. Like yeah. the the Buster Rhymes Buster type Rhymes rapper, type. Uh, energetic, energetic, yeah. versatile, charismatic, charismatic. Yeah. Uh, uh, bars on the top of his head like crazy. You should have seen the studio session, man. Like he was rapping the whole time. <laughs> walking around the booth, yeah. walking around the, the, the studio uh, on his phone, rapping bars, rapping bars all the time. It's like, I love this person. We fell in love with right away. We became brothers right away. We understood each other right away. There's no words to describe this guy. There's not enough words to describe this human being. The most authentic person I've ever met, the most genuine person I've ever met, the most generous person I've ever met, the most passionate person I've ever met. 
he was my rock, my therapist at the same time. Whenever I was feeling down, I could call him at 2 a.m. He would answer. It was more than music, right? It was more than music yeah. right away. Yeah. From day one. I know it sounds cliche, no, but... It makes sense. It makes sense. You know? To say that about per people that you meet in life, but... What a beautiful soul, soul. man. That's what it is. An but angel on people, earth, just bro. Just know their energy. Or... Never... Yeah. If he had a bad day, you couldn't tell. You would never know it. You never know it. You never bring it to work. Because yeah. when we were through sessions, it was all about work. Yeah. <laughs> he would drop five songs in the session. That's why we dropped like 60 singles at one point. Yeah. Like, Hard worker. That's true but, love, right? He had a true love for the craft. But man, true love for the craft respected you, respected your time. Uh, I, re I have a funny story. I, I remember one day I came, I came down in the studio, opened up the computer, crash. Computer crash? Yeah. Hard wow. drive crash. You lost everything? No, 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 because okay. I save everything on external hard drive okay. Okay. and computer the cloud. Crash. But the important. main hard drive where um, Windows is installed, so basically, a computer, you have a main drive and an external drive where you save the stuff. Okay. But the main drive, which had Windows installed, crashed. Okay. There was an old drive. Which you needed to continue recording at that point. So I needed a new drive. Okay. I, uh, Dip Black calls me for something else. And I tell him, yeah, I'm a bit down, man. My drive just crashed. He's like, no way. And super like energetic, yeah. like the way he talks. <laughs> no way. <laughs> like, you know, Let's go. Super loud. Yeah. Like, but he's like, yo, bro, yo, dog, what do you need? What do you need? This, what's the piece? Like, yeah. what is he it? doesn't really know what computer, yeah. computer pieces yeah. exactly. are. So I don't know, man, I need a new SSD drive. Yeah. At that time, I still had that mechanical hard drive. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was about to die. So I sent him a screenshot of what I need. Yo, dog, where I find that? I don't know, man, Best Buy, uh, Computer Canada. I swear, uh, not even an hour later, he shows up to my door with, with a piece. Our drive now. Yeah. <laughs> Without you even asking him to go get it. No. He was like, I got this. I got this. He took it in his own hands, came back. That's, that's this it. guy, <laughs> I, and I tell that story just to like sum up a bit of the way he was. Yeah, the, show up his character. His right? character, yeah. his, his approach. When you're, when you're in this circle, in this, family i'll do anything for you he said i literally i'll give you his last ten dollars if you can if you need it to eat it to eat kind of he'll thing. lend you his car if you need to go somewhere sounds like a good soul it sounds cliche but there must be a sometimes you like why you always take the better people like yeah the best out of people the be, like, but no i mean like God, why you always like take, take away from us the yeah. best of the people? A good die young, right? I don't know. There must be a bigger plan, or uh, I don't know. I'm not religious, or, like, or anything. Yeah. But I know he's watching over us. I know he's there somewhere. I believe I'm a spiritual person. I it's believe a plan, you know? there's. I believe yeah. there's energies around us, and I. I think he's watching over us. Um, I would do a full interview just talking that's about this man, life. man. Yeah, like, exactly. that's, that's how much he impacted me yeah, uh, in a positive a way. I, I lead my way being the best person that I can to honor his legacy, to honor his life. Everything I'm going to do from now on is always to, to honor his life. And everyone that I talk to with that were close to him feel the same way. Yeah, they understand. Had a similar connection with yeah. as well. Because we're a close cir uh, we're a close knit circle and yeah. <sighs> uh, it, it impacted a lot of people, man. I don't think I'll never uh, quite process it, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to like uh, see the studio the same way. Or uh, see my future projects the same way or see life the same way i'm always going to try to approach it in the, in the matter that he would be proud of and also in a manner that's going to honor his legacy and treat everyone 
and I mean everyone, the way he was treating people. I mean in the most beautiful way possible. And also, all this to go back to your question that about the Dreamland sessions, while well, the idea came in the studio session with him. And I was always pondering the idea, I want to do a series of freestyle, like the Rhapsody Basement freestyle, yeah. and film it, and produce it on the spot. Who was the first one? The Black. The Black was the first yeah. Dreamland session. Yeah. yeah, and they could have been a better person. Yeah. Started off. <laughs> so basically, I was in the studio, we just finished recording songs for his album, Blackout. And um, I, before he left, I was like, yo, are you down to work on something else too, before you leave? He said, yeah, dog, sure, dog. <laughs> Always. Always positive, Always let's, let's do it. And then I pitched him the idea, yo, you down to do like a Dreamland session? That, I already knew the name where I wanted to go with that. And then pitched him the idea, like, there's no beat, no, no lyrics yet. I'm mean, gonna do everything on the spot. Then I film you perform it, and I really see it as a freestyle. He said, fuck yeah, yeah let's do it. Yeah, so that's how it started. I did the beat on the spot. He was there writing on the spot. And then when he, <laughs> uh, the idea of the first Dreamland sessions was to keep it a, a minute, yeah. minute long, 16 bars a minute long, because yeah. when you post it on Instagram, it could only go yeah. cool. a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can do like, you can do whatever. Yeah. yeah exactly. But back then it was yeah. just a minute, yeah. just two years ago, which is, yeah. Show how fast so the whole session took 45 minutes Quick things to do the beat for yeah. him to write the bars, yeah. record it and film it. And I dropped it, I believe, four days after. <laughs> and Just then like he started that session. He started that new series. I started the Avalanche. Yeah, the right? Avalanche. And, and then people started reaching out. Hey, I want to do one. I want to do one. I didn't want to do one. And now I did 91 of them. 91. Yeah, 91. Uh, <laughs> but I couldn't have wished for someone better than him to start. To start. Yeah, to start that trend. And what's cool about the Dreamland session, it brought so much exposure to the brand, Dreamland, uh, to the crew, the people I was working with, to the city. City itself. Even though that a newspaper from Windsor, Ontario, did an, an article did on, it. on it, yeah, yeah. yeah, that reached out and did an article. I, that even Hip Hop Canada did yeah, something exactly. on it, which oh. on a series, which for me it was all oh, never. You weren't even thinking that. No, I wasn't even thinking that, or never it. thought it would reach that many people. Sorry, yeah. organically posting them. Exactly. So. That yeah. kind of brings me back to my city question. If they get more involved, yeah, like the fact that your Dreamland sessions, you know, they, you get you're getting love from Windsor, you're getting love from Hip Hop Canada. I think the capital should show more love to that. You yeah, know, and what's cool is uh, they did, they did. Yeah. Shifter did something on it yeah. too. Uh, Cap City did something on it too, yeah. and all the rappers that participated in the, in the concept 91, did their part. Yeah. So. Right. What's cool is, I no one said no to the project. I mean, it was such an organic idea, and you're pushing. I feel down. honored. I feel blessed. Yeah. Cap, uh, like City Fidelia did one. Not gonna lie, that when he did one, that kind of pushed it like over the top too. Over the top. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. people noticed he was serious. Yeah. So shout out to Luigi for jumping on it, and all this. The Dreamland session. Also, what's cool is every ten, I would drop it as an album on uh, platforms as well. So, but what's cool is all this brought momentum to what would come soundtrack eventually too. Yeah, 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 and gain attention and gain credibility, notoriety, and and a lot of people that you see on soundtrack. A lot of people, I think, all of them. Did a dreamland sessions so pretty much almost all of them so it was kind of like the next venture yeah to go to talk about next ventures now that we've covered the sound part of quest's adventure <laughs> how did you get into photography how did you 
with the birth of Instagram. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Because I look at your pictures, you know, like people don't know that, like, they don't know where our relationship started. Yeah. We used to see each other at lots of events. Yeah. I used to always tell you, like, because your eye, I always saw those angles you had. Like, you take pictures differently. You know, everybody can take a picture. They also take them differently. Thank you. Which also made me tell you, like, I don't know what we're going to do, but our project is coming, you know? Event after event. So no, no, I remember. You remember. You know? We actually talked for almost three years, you know? Every time we would cross path. And every time. Eventually, like, we'll work on something. Work is amazing. Yeah. You got this artistic yeah. guy that, like, yeah. I look at a lot of videos, I look at a lot of pictures, so there's a lot of things I notice, you know, as as you can see, you brought all together so well in this exposition. So I want to know what, what when did you first pick up a camera? By uh, accident. <laughs> you know, I'm sure uh, you were busy as hell already. It's your music. It's your yes, music life yes, I well. was. I was. I was uh, actually when I started doing photos, I was at the peak of my That's what I'm saying. being a quest of producer, music producer, and it, it was around the beginning of Instagram. So okay. 2014, 15. Uh, I don't know if people remember, but beginning Instagram was just to post pictures. That's it. Uh, and the artists I was working with producing their project never had good pictures. So. Okay. That's where it came from, the <laughs> lack of and, good pictures. And at first I was never thinking I was going to take the pictures. So I was hiring photographers okay. to take pictures. Yeah. Uh, Still for remember. their social media and also for the artwork okay. cover of the album. So that's how it came. And um, I was never really satisfied with the results <laughs> of it. or the, 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 the time frame it was taking for us to okay. receive the pictures. Yeah, it didn't fit the schedule. Yeah. So you decided, you know what? Maybe I'll take it upon style. myself. <laughs> That's how it was and shout out to uh, Ali. Uh, Ali uh, was the first guy to uh, introduce me to photography. He lent me his camera, uh, his camera, and Sony A7. Not the one I have now, but the first model of it. And uh, I started working around with it, just having fun, trying to learn the camera. He taught me. He's my mentor when it comes okay. to photography. Okay. And he knows that every time I see him, I tell him I this wouldn't exist yeah, either without, without him. Without these teachings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He would not. Yeah. Uh, uh, two yeah. photographers I have to give shout out for. Uh, no, three. There's a guy named Rock. Yeah. There's a guy named Ali and uh, Lunatic. Yeah. So I started playing around with his camera and starting to take pictures and then I actually started uh, realizing real quick that I, uh, I was not to throw myself flowers, but pretty decent at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, comparison to most of the stuff you were seeing out there. No, no, I'm not the type to compare myself to other yeah. stuff because yeah. I think everyone's good. Yeah. I really do. I think everyone has their own talents, style. their own style. But I understood pretty quick. Oh, I can get the hang of this. Yeah, this. Yeah. And then I started taking pictures of the rappers I was working with. And then they posted on their social media. And then it became bigger than what the, I intended it to be real quick. Yeah. Then I started getting messages from people. Can I hire you to take pictures? Take pictures. Can I hire you to take pictures? Yeah, yeah. And that's how I found myself being a photographer. Just like that. I yeah. see you taking it. You can take a picture of like this fire extinguisher. It will look different when you take it. You know, you got this way of taking angles. And you know what it is? Like, thank you because I, I take pride into it. Yeah. You can but take the picture with nothing in it and still make it look good, is what I'm saying. You know, it still looks artistic. What it is, is I think it goes basically to my curious nature. I'm curious about stuff in general, I'm curious about people. I'm curious about human nature and I'm curious about how to transcend that into a picture. Yeah. Uh, and I also find there's no wrong answer when you're taking a picture or doing art in general. Yeah. Whatever you do at that moment is how you felt yeah, at that moment. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be what it's gonna be. Yeah. And I'm not, I feel blessed about it. Not afraid to put stuff out there. Yeah, which is and that's how you learn and that's how you get better and that's how you you create your 
your your persona, your brand, your craft, yeah. and that's how you get better at it. And that's how you get your ten thousand hours under your belt. Yeah. And I find I feel lucky that I was blessed to not be an overthinker when it came to that. So and I was not afraid to put stuff out there. So do the work and put it out. Yeah. So, so now we've covered sound, we've covered photography. There's still another trifecta to that Dreamline Studios, which is videography. Yeah. When did the pictures turn into videos? Is that the same type of same type of stride where you're not getting what you wanted from the videographers that were already out there? How did same, you start? same type of stride. Uh, again, Ali is my mentor for that. Same thing. Yeah, because he was the first guy I saw uh, from my own eyes shooting a music video. Okay. Okay. Because he shot a music video for my bro Al Niro's. The song is rap, and that was my first introduction to seeing a guy with a camera shooting yeah. a music video. Okay. So shout out to him again, and another guy named Plaz, who and Alviros as well. Those three guys played a big role in being in teaching me how to shoot music videos. Um, again, I it was just a matter of budget too. Most rappers didn't have that much budget to shoot music videos, so I started shooting them. Uh, I like how you brought up the budget for free because you're definitely bringing bringing a product that most people cannot afford. Yeah. Especially the further you go back, the less affordable it was. In my knowledge, anyway, it was way more expensive back yes, then. Yes, yes, so no yes. No one would even even think of doing. No, it. yeah, I remember the first first ever video I saw was shot was with the YBN uh, uh, YBM guys. Uh, shout out to uh, Jeff and uh, Jeff. Shout out to Jeff. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and wow. Junior. Uh, you, yeah, back then you had to like actually rent a camera. And, like everything. Yeah. You know, the budgets were yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember the first place where you could actually rent equipment was uh, Saw Gallery. Saw Gallery? Yeah. They had a renting uh, department. You could rent cameras and audio and, and equipment, audio and you could rent their computers to go edit your videos. Wow, and yeah, like yeah. So yeah, it was more expensive. Also, now it's more obtainable than ever. Uh, you can shoot a music video with your iPhone Pro. Right. Okay. So, but uh, no, I just again my curious nature. I wanted to try it. <laughs> Do this. And I remember to this day my first video is shout out Dominique Gorley. She's the first one. Yeah, that one you shoot her video. Yeah. Put those skills yeah. to the test. The song is called How It Ends and it's still on YouTube. Uh, you can see it uh, to this day and I'm pretty proud of it too yeah. for, for our first uh, video. Yeah, and still getting numbers. And uh, it's just I fell in love with the craft. I fell in love with shooting music videos and then the rest is history. I think I shot over a hundred videos now. Yeah. It must yeah. be. And I feel blessed and so blessed and honored to have been able to shoot the Black's music videos yeah. too. I think we have uh, eight videos together now. Like. Okay, so we've pictured, we, we, we've covered the sound, we've covered the photography, we've covered the videography, which now, right before we get into the soundtrack, because that's this is basically the trifecta of all those skills. Those three services pretty much make you a very demanded man, right? You got people wanting to record, you got people that want pictures, you got people that want videos. Yeah. Your schedule is all over the place. You're meeting all types of people. You're meeting all types of energies, you know? So I'm wondering, like, where does Quest take Quest time? You know, where do you find time to, to gather your peace? Keep your mental health, stop from going crazy. Yeah. A lot of people have one job. That one job will drive crazy. Yeah. So I can only imagine if you're doing 32 things every single day. Well, at least the good thing is they don't seem like jobs too. In some it's way. more of a passion. Yeah, it's so, more of a passion that yeah. ends up uh, paying me at the same time. But it's never been seen as a way to like pay the bills either. Mm -hmm. It's just weird. Like um, that. Luckily, I don't see it as a job. Obviously some projects demand more work <laughs> can be exhausting of course. Uh, but love what, you do. what you love what you do like that cliche uh, phrase or expression is it's real. It is, it's real it actually is and 
when you're working for yourself, it, obviously it is 24 seven and you're part of that. Your, your life is part of your, your work, right? So um, luckily I just love what I do, man, so much that I don't feel like I'm working a second for real. And I get to meet some genuine, very good people, some talented human beings, and most of them become good friends. Too. So it's like working with family at the same time. Building connection. Building connection. The ideas and what's beautiful about experience in life is you end up eventually understanding your schedule better. So uh, as you, you're more experienced at doing this, you like, you you have to understand the balance and never quite. Uh, forget to like take time for David because there's Quest but there's David as right. well so not too many people know David yeah. exists you know so you never you, which has, you <laughs> basically just have to make sure you never forget about him and, and that's the balance in life and, and luckily the, the better experience you get at this the more uh, older you get the more the better you are at managing your schedule your time, yeah right? managing yeah. your own time See and uh, also like this project i'm doing right now is is for me man as long as much as it is for the culture and the community and the city which i love it's also a project i did for me and let's talk about it now that we're here you know and uh, we we went in depth with quest and so i wanted to touch base with that before i got you to explain what exactly is going on around us right now. Tell me about this soundtrack exposition. So soundtrack, I started this project in January this year. January of this year? Yeah, I started this project officially in January with the help, like I said, of Black Market Framework and Kingsley. As soon as I knew I had the funds to do it, thanks to her, <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, let's go. It's time and uh, a few factors came together to create this project. Also, uh, finding my dad's camera in the basement, which <laughs> for me was pretty talking, much triggered it. We're talking photography. Yeah, yeah. Finding photog your dad's camera in the basement was triggered the project. Yeah. Explain that to me. Um, my dad was taking pictures of us on this '70s Canon camera, analog camera, film camera, okay. and. Uh, December, the holidays, I went to my parents' place for the holidays. And uh, I remember going to the basement where there's a bunch of stuff yeah. <laughs> from us yeah. and the family. And so uh, I remember just finding in a box the camera. And, like a show down memory lane. <laughs> and I was like, I wonder if I could use it. it could still work. Again, yeah. the curious pe person that I am. Yeah. Because I've never done photo on film. And I, yeah, exactly. So I'm let's sure. keep in mind there's photos on digital cameras and there's photos on film. Film is way, way tougher. <laughs> it's a different ball game. I, I can tell you now after doing this project. Um, so, yes, that's what triggered it. I was like, because I knew I was, I always wanted to do a photography exhibit. Yeah. I didn't know what, I didn't know when, I didn't know what the concept would be, but then finding that camera, I was like, okay, maybe I could play around with it. And it still, does it still work? And then I found a place in, on Bank Street in Ottawa that sells films, Galaxy Camera. Okay, uh, still ready for going with it. <laughs> so it filmed, uh, you can still purchase films over there, which is cool. So I started playing around with it. And then I, I, I love the idea of like, challenging myself uh, stepping outside your comfort zone trying something, new. Just trying something new it's the best thing you can do as a creator i believe and uh, i if i'm gonna do this exhibit it would be too easy to do it with my digital camera which i've taken 2000 photos with already in my life even more probably yeah uh, probably because i've done weddings too so yeah so I was like, let's find a way to like challenge yourself. And then soundtrack, when they started to come together in January, the idea of doing a photography exhibit, doing music attached to it, hence the name soundtrack. 
because there's a kamsanal to the there's a soundtrack to the project. Yeah. Then finding the camera, then getting that grant. Again, thanks to Kingsley, and then getting the location, thanks to the yeah. Everything Every together. all the stars were aligning, yeah. and then one more thing I have to add is in this it also. Last winter, I went to visit a, an exhibit in Montreal uh, of a painter. I forgot the name, sorry. But it was a painter's exhibit. And then at the entrance of the exhibit, yeah, there was a sign say, pick a pair of headphones, put the headphones on, scan that QR code at the entrance, and you'll hear music as you walk through the exhibit. And the music was created for that exhibit. So it was like, such a cool idea. So before anything came together, there was that spark as well. Inspiration. That inspiration. So multiple factors, man, inspired that project. My love for photography, my love for music production, uh, getting my first grant, getting the location, and uh, finding that most people, when I pitched the idea, most artists, when I pitched the idea, were on board. Every everyone was into it. Hard not to be. <laughs> Hard not to be. And and I mean everyone. So shout out to all these artists that jumped on board and oh, made this amazing talent. and made this possible because it wouldn't be the same if I didn't have all these beautiful talents on it. And you shot all these pictures with that same camera. You might yeah. <laughs> so all 25 so basically there you go that soundtrack 25 portraits with 25 songs specifically made for a soundtrack for soundtrack in my studio with the artist and it's made, like all those descriptions like it yep. wasn't just any song that they no no we did we made, made this song for the project for the song was made the yeah. picture was made yeah everything was made specifically for the exposition yeah yeah uh, I did all the <laughs> I did all the beats uh, except for one, the Leah Cloud beat, which is shout out to Drew. Uh, I added my little spice on it, but uh, shout out to him. And the song with Young Heat and For the World, I collaborated with Young Heat on that beat. Apart from that, every uh, single beat was made by you in the studio. You, picture taken by you. Yeah, like that is such a ridiculous accomplishment. Mixed by me, a shout out to P. P is another local uh, artist that's very talented. He did the mastering on the project. Okay, okay. Because I wanted to involve someone else with him from the community yeah, too. Community yeah, club. yeah, on the project. But uh, it's my proudest project so far, man. Like, I really, really am proud of this one. Um, it's a teamwork, it's a team effort. The community came together. I'm proud of it. Uh, I'm proud of everyone that's involved. Uh, also, it was a challenge because I wasted five rolls learning the camera. Just, just learning how to properly use it and yeah. get the right shots. Yeah, and get the right picture. Uh, get the right film. Yeah, you can imagine how. Every how film has their own unique qualities. So, yeah. uh, and seeing it on the wall now. It's been what three weeks now, and it's. I'm very, very proud of it, man. Like, it's even seeing a couple of days ago, my dad come to see it, which is a full circle moment because his camera started it. Yeah, it must have been emotional for him as well. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's uh, it's something else, bro. It's. I'm very proud of it, and so far the response of the people that came to visit, I, I am so blessed and humbled. Uh, it's exceeding all expectations. Um, wow! Uh, also seeing the black on the project too, yeah, again. On top of that, I uh, see you have a little corner. Uh, yeah. Little tribute. Absolutely, because uh, paying homage. Um, I had no choice, man. Yeah. This project became dedicated to him. Yeah. If you listen to the first song, I say it as soon as the song starts. Is this project is dedicated to him, and also because that's the last picture I took of him too, that you see over there and on the wall. And 
that resonates so much because of that. And, yeah. yeah. Every day differently. <laughs> One last thing I need to say about this project is all the frames are for sale. Okay. I'm yeah. selling them as as is, as you see them on the wall, yeah. as piece of uh, one of ones, uh, collection piece, yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the funds, all the profits from it are going to a local organization called Produce by Youth. Okay. It's a group of three people: uh, Samuel, uh, Tafari, and uh, Liam, uh, and. Um, they put together that program that helps kids develop artistic talents in the art of bean making and help kids just find after school program and stuff like that and streets yeah yeah and they're local they're based off uh, ottawa and i wanted to support them because i respect what they're doing and i love what they're doing and, and all three individuals behind that project are beautiful people so two of them on the project too Right there, the striped shirt. And yeah. So, and uh, I'm trying to sell all the frames to gather funds for them. So, <clears throat> so far, I think uh, there's five left. Five yeah. I think there is a little bit of the yellow sticker. That's right. Yeah, okay. I'm selling them as a base price, of a flat price of 125. And uh, so far, they sold out pretty well and pretty quickly and I'm very proud of it and the word has been spreading and I think people love also the idea of like supporting the, the organization also yeah. but supporting the community and and, checking a lot of boxes and, and being beautiful. part of and having a piece of it at home exactly. too so which I find beautiful and it's also my way to leave, leave a legacy behind yeah. Like knowing that yeah. these frames are gonna live on forever. Yeah. yeah. When I saw this take retreat, uh, uh, take shape and see the result on the wall, I was like, yeah, I want to do it again. Now. And uh, I'm gonna do it again with different people. Some people are gonna like jump on volume two as well yeah. that you see here. Why not? Uh, I don't see a problem with that. And it's gonna be the same concept and uh, same type of. Framing. Yeah, the All the frames are second-hand frames, by the way. Oh, that was yeah. important for me. I uh, refurbish. Yeah, I refurbish yeah. Uh, instead of creating something new. So, and I think it adds to the exhibit in some yeah, ways. So, it does. so yeah, no, I'm already planning the volume two. <laughs> Again, definitely. same time next year. Well, definitely, congratulations on your first exposition. September to October it was a month long. Yeah. Definitely a success. I've seen all types of people come through and check it out. And it's one hell of a I've never been in such an exposition myself where you can walk around, QR code different artists and listen to their music, especially when the track was created just for the exposition. Yeah. So yeah. it's quite a unique experience you created for us here. So where do you see Dreamline Studios three years from now, five years from now? one year from now. Obviously, I'm still going to do that. Mm -hmm. The soundtrack. Hey, I got it tattooed on me now, the logo. Wow. Uh, okay. I, nice. did, I did that because I believe so much in it that yeah. I wanted it to become my legacy. I mean, it's definitely a part of your life. Yeah, though, it's going to be a part of my legacy yeah. in my life and it's the, this community. So I'm going to be doing this again in the, uh, one year, in two years, three years, five years. And what do I see myself? And the brand. Yeah, uh, the project you have in mind. Obviously, I'm always going to co produce a festival as well, mm -hmm. which is uh, going to happen again next year. I'm proud yeah. to announce. Uh, I want to like start collaborating with uh, other festivals as well. Yeah. That's one of my plans yeah. to like have joint ventures again, uh, my way to like bridge gaps. And uh, my next big venture would be. Uh, Started giving workshops and teachings and um, pass down all that experience. pass down that knowledge and experience. Knowledge. I've been asked about it. Transfer the knowledge. Transfer knowledge what I know in music and uh, what I know in, in uh, how to use a camera when when it comes to videography or photography. So uh, the same thing, the same way I was taught stuff, I want to do it too. So I think 
what you can see it coming in the near future would be workshops or I'm still trying to figure out well, how I'm going to do it if, if it's yeah. going to be in person or yeah. like more online yeah. stuff virtual classes, virtual virtual classes, classes yeah. or like content virtual content so yeah. I'm just trying to like debate yeah. that but I think that's going to be in the near future and uh, again I'm going to do soundtrack volume 2 the funds for next year are going to go to a different organization and I already know that next year I want to do a two months exhibit. Okay, under. A month here yeah. and a month on the Ottawa side. Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that would be my goal That's for the next year. That's people together. And... Yeah. Bring me to my last question, actually, because on the Haitian flag, my country's flag, it says, when you open up false, which we all know means strength and unity. How does that translate to you? Which I can already see around us now. How would you describe it? Oh man, it's uh, it's that thing gets a every big project or every big person has a team behind them. Uh, there's uh, I grew up watching teams uh, playing and watching uh, team sports like soccer and basketball. I think the Bulls would not Jordan would not be Jordan without his team. Everyone has their position. Everyone has their position. Everyone plays their role. Uh, I'm a strong advocate of you need to surround yourself with people that believe in you as much as you do. And I am a strong advocate that stuff like that happens organically when the stars align. Man. Like, when, it's time, when it's time, you attract what you put out there, basically. And I really, really believe that you can accomplish big things, man, in life by yourself, but you can accomplish even bigger things with strong people behind you or around you. And uh, man, I've been blessed, especially in the last four years, to have strong people around me. And uh, I could name names, but it would take forever. Forever. I know. I know that people. When it, they know who they are, obviously. Uh, but unity, uh, obviously, I am. I also believe in keeping your circle cl uh, tight, tight knit as well. Uh, but man, I'm I'm all about the culture and the community, as you can see on the walls right now. Mm -hmm. And I love every one of these individuals like my own family, so that, hence the name Papa Quest. Yeah, so, right. so, but I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I love every one of yeah. these people and, and everyone that played a role behind the scenes. So yeah. it's, you need the, you need the uh, L'Union fait la force. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Especially when you believe, especially when you know you, who you are because you're gonna attract people exactly. your character your alone. character yeah. so yeah. yeah I would say not be afraid to discover who you are and be yourself stay true to that because and be patient because you're not gonna build a team overnight and you're not gonna build a family most people don't all come in one day overnight yeah. no they don't and some come and go they do and that's all right that's all right. That's life. But the track that you see on the wall, that, that full circle moment, man, and seeing him on the project, and that's the first guy that bought one, my first beat. So, yeah, l'union fait la force in me, my friend. I just want to take the time to say thank you. So, thank so you, bro. Thank you, bro. We have these Very chats all overdue. the time, you know, but it's they're usually behind the camera. Yeah. You know, people don't know yeah. the conversations we have on our own time, but. It means a lot to me to get you in front of the cameras. So Thank you. See. Thank you. It you means know. a lot for to be having this conversation with you right now, my friend. That's it. You know, personally, yeah. your character means a lot to me. You know, we've, we've grown extremely close in a very short time yeah. because of your character and the person you are. So I respect it at all. Don't ever fucking change. I will not. You know, you got that UFLF love for love for life. I'll never change, bro. I promise that, man. Thank Same you. thing for you. You got Dreamland in your corner. That's it. Thank you for your time. UFLF 1804 episodes. We out.